So the paper we're releasing today is called Grounding Green Power, Bottom-Up Perspectives on Smart Renewable Energy Policy in Developing Countries. It's a paper that's based on a workshop we held in November of last year, November 2010, in Washington, D.C. with experts from 12 developing countries. So the idea was to um, get a bottom-up perspective on what has actually worked in developing countries rather than to have um, rather than to try to reinvent the wheel or to develop something just sitting at our desks coming up with this model of how to do it, we thought it's most useful to find out what's already happening and what has worked on the ground. What we see already is that renewable energy is growing spectacularly, 47% of all new electricity generation capacity that was added in the last two years was actually renewable energy and People think that this year is probably the year where it's going to be more than fossil fuel for the first time. So we see growth and a lot of that is happening in developing countries. About 80% of all the new capacity we'll add over the next decades will be in developing countries. So we see a trend towards more renewables, but it's also a trend that's still too slow um, to uh, stop the climate challenge. So um, what we're, what the, the, it's clear that developing countries will play an important role in renewable energies in the future. Uh, and the challenge is to uh, m give renewables an even bigger share in the power mix of developing countries. Renewables are already growing very fast in the developing world, but they need to grow even faster because the projections we have show that uh, the, compared to what we think will happen in a business as usual scenario, the share of renewables would have to double um, to make it possible to reach a two degrees target for global warming. Um, so if we want to solve the climate challenge, we need to see more growth in renewable energy in the developing world. The donor community um, can help this process by building on what's happening already. So the donor community doesn't have to uh, start from scratch or start with uh, concepts they develop, um, but they can build on the existing momentum in the developing world. So there is a lot of renewable energy uh, policy being implemented in the developing world and the donors can add the additional um, support for capacity building, they can add the additional technical knowledge and the additional financing that's needed to take that to the next level. So uh, the, the number one top recommendation is that we need to support smart renewable energy policy rather than just supporting projects. So it's nice to build a wind farm and it's fine to invest in that and that's a good thing. But it's even better to invest in the conditions that make a lot of people uh, want to invest in wind farms. So we get this transformative effect of really changing the energy system. The second one would be that um, when you support renewable energy policy, it's really about the package of measures. It's, there is no silver bullet, one size fits all solution, but you need to build institutions, you need to build your grid, you need to have the skilled engineers and you need to invest in their training, you need to have a banking sector that's willing to finance projects, and you need to have the financial means to be able to um, pay an incentive that bridges the cost gap for renewables. And you need to do all of these things.